Hi, today I want to talk about UIKit and I want to start um, a video series actually. I've been planning on doing something like that for a while now, um, pretty much because I myself like um, videos for like technical topics, kind of tutorials, um, and I just want to practice it a bit and try getting into it. Um, I have a few projects in mind that I want to talk about in the future. Um, one of them is UIKit. Um, and I think um, it's a good way, it's a good place to start because um, it might be interesting for a lot of people, I hope. Um, so yeah, let's get started. UIKit, if you haven't heard about it, is a um, open source front-end framework for web development. That means that it's basically a collection of CSS and JavaScript that helps you yeah, structure your, your project, um, and um, basically includes a lot of components that you can readily use in your own in your own web pages and web apps. Um, a few words for um, about who's behind it. Um, UIKit is actually being developed by Utheme, um, a German company, um, who develop WordPress and Joomla themes and who actually use um, UIKit for their own themes as well. So um, a short disclaimer, I'm actually, um, yes, I'm actually affiliated with Utheme as well, but um, this is, yeah, this is a completely unofficial videos, video series, um, and yeah, I'm just talking about it like from a personal perspective, and I also use UIKit for my own personal project, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Why would you want to use um, a front-end framework or UIKit in particular? Um, there's, I think there are several several reasons. Um, I myself quite like uh, having this um, like given structure of how to structure your markup. It really helps me um, keeping my own markup uh, kind of clean and tidy. And there are a few things about UIKit that I like in particular. And yeah, I'm just gonna gonna talk about that for a bit now, and I'll just highlight some features of your iKit that I think are quite cool in this uh, very first video. Um, what I like is the modularity of your iKit. That means that basically it's split, um, as you can see here on the official website, it's split into a core part and a components part. Let's have a look at the core. The core is basically um, a lot of the stuff and the like small components that you will use in most of your projects, um, which is why they are like bundled together in this core part. So you have uh, stuff for layouting, for building navigations, um, styling for like common um, HTML elements like forms and tables, and you know, just things you will need over and over again like buttons, um, icons, which are actually from the Font Awesome um, icon font project. Um, and, of, and also some JavaScript um, components, which I think are really cool. Let's have a click, quick look at uh, one or two of those. Um, I quite like the scroll spy component. Um, as you can see here, it, as soon as you scroll to some element, um, there's some action triggered. So in this case, there's an animation class added to the element. Um, yeah, it's quite nice. And um, yeah, things like that just um, because I think it's pretty cool to just be able to add this small snippet in one of your elements instead of starting to write your own custom animation uh, script and so on. Well, um, yeah, but that's uh, that's basically this is more um, this is not the basic things. Of course, you would want to use uh, what you would you always use is like the grid for the layout and yeah, like the nav bar for a navigation because you will. You'll always use it, probably not in that like complex way here, but it comes it keeps coming over and over again. Um, with, that's why those parts yeah, are, as I said, in the core. And then in addition to that, if you go to the component section, there are some other things, which are um, if you just include the core CSS files and JavaScript files, those components will not be available. Um, you will have to include your, uh, like additional CSS files, for example, yeah, just want to highlight one or two here as well. Um, yeah, I think the yeah, just the the date picker. You know, you um, the date picker 
might come in really handy if you're building some kind of web app or a backend, um, but you will probably not use it in um, all of your web pages, which is why it makes sense to like have that in a separate component instead of the core. Another cool component that I'd like to highlight is the HTML editor. This is what it looks like, and as you can see, it's a like, yeah, like a full HTML editor uh, with a, a code mirror based um, editor on the left and a live preview on the right. And actually, as you can see here, it also works with Markdown. Um, so if you even go to full screen, I think this is a really nice writing environment for um, Markdown. Um, you, um, your UI kit comes with this concept of uh, themes and uh, styles, um, and I'll you can see that in the customizer. Um, I've already opened it here in this tab. Um, the customizer actually allows you to um, yeah, create your own theme, your own style for the yeah for the for the UI kit um, components. Um, UIKit itself comes with three uh, prepared themes, uh, basically like examples of what you can do. You know, this is a very, uh, yeah, like gradient heavy um, theme. And then there are two more, which are more like, you know, more flat, less gradients, less shadows and so on. But um, actually UIKit is built with uh, less, the uh, CSS, CSS precompiler, uh, which allows us to um, change values on the left and it will automatically um, yeah update the preview on the right here um, of course this is like <laughs> it's not the best example here but um, well you will go through you could go through all the variables and even like have a look at the more advanced settings um, yeah, you can you can change a lot of stuff and you can you can do that here which you use the live preview and then you download the the compiled CSS. Or you even download the um, LS variables that you just changed and you can keep on working on that style in code even further. So that's a really cool uh, tool and um, it allows for a lot of advanced things you can do but um, I think we'll have a look at that later. Um, one more thing I want to um, highlight is what I personally really like is that, um, just have a look at uh, one component here, I don't know, it doesn't really matter which one. Um, is that every CSS class in UIKit has this UK dash prefix, which personally I quite like. If in my markup I see uh, several CSS classes, I can immediately spot which ones are from UIKit and which ones are from my own CSS. Um, and then just to add on the, I think, I, yeah, I already talked about the modularity that I quite like, which you can already see in these like, um, single components here, um, but it also extends to when you get to the more advanced topics. You can get the development um, version, like not just the compiled CSS, but with all the uh, less files, or if you prefer SAS, you can get the SCSS files as well. There's an SCSS port available. And um, there you can create your own kind of version of your, your, your own build. For example, you could um, create a build where you include all components you want to use, like all the layouting components and so on, but exclude the base styling. Let's click on here. The base styling basically styles yeah, your headings, um, does some yeah, normalization from the normalized project. Um, but of course, the base styling uh, overrides your default HTML styling, and sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you just want to have the UI kit code applied to uh, like certain elements and not have it overwrite your headings. And that is also uh, possible if you create your own build and yeah, kind of select the components um, you want to use. But that's a more advanced topic and we might get into that later, but not in the first few videos. Um, yeah, if you want to get started, uh, watch the next video where I'll talk about um, your basic markup here that you can use mm. or have a look at the um, layout examples available on the website where you can see some example markup for how to build the blog for example and also if you want to get some ideas of what's possible check out the showcase which is on the website where you can see some some websites um, actually build with UIKit so you can see what's possible 
Um, if you have questions, uh, check out the Google Plus community, which is quite, quite active. Um, if you have problems or issues, go to the GitHub repository, find an issue there. And um, if you have more <laughs> important questions that needs, need to be answered right away, join the GitHub chat. There's a button here in the GitHub repository. Um, usually there's always someone online who is willing to help. All right, so that was the first video of this series. Um, I hope someone is uh, keen on following this series along. I'm keen to hear some feedback because I really want to improve, yeah, like explaining stuff like that in videos. Um, okay, thanks so far.